Well, I've cleaned up a little bit. Taking the chips off, clean the table up a little bit. Uh, now I want to talk a bit about the setup. Why I uh, am using the tools that I'm using and compare them with some other things. Uh, first, I'll move the table back and I'll reposition the camera, set some junk out, and we'll start to talk about this setup. repositioned now and uh, I want to talk about how this is set up first there are two spuds in the bore the bearing bore this is for a shaker screen bearing if you set them at a 90 degree angle inside that bore a round bore is going to come back pretty much zero from now to eternity when you hang it over the uh, buttons. They act like an inside out V block. Before I put the clamping stud on the knee, I indicated the bore and then I offset the spindle 10 inches. But I have to adjust. These pads will go anywhere from three and a quarter, about three two hundred to three and a half inches. Well I come over in my ten inches which means there will be some down and some up. These holes aren't necessarily in the center. I offset nine inches and nine hundred and ninety nine thousandths instead of ten. That means if I've got a hole that is more or less true with the world um, then I have a, a bore that's 9.999 away. If the hole moves down or moves up, because they do, I put them back where I got them. Uh, if it moves down or up, well then I've got a longer distance. I'm actually working on the hypotenuse of a triangle and it adds about a thousandths if you get to three sixteenths of an inch. So then, or a little over a thousand, so you actually uh, are just a touch over ten. They, they are plus or minus five to ten from the, from the OEM anyway. I find the bore, the bottom of the bore, before I weld these with a height gauge from the back off the table. The height gauge is zeroed from this. The spindle is zeroed on this, and then the readout, or my calculations, from the point from this zero go to minus eight seven five or seven eighths of an inch because this is a three quarter inch and three quarter bore and the, so when my spindle was zeroed here my readout's reading inch and seven eighths minus that way whatever number that I get over there uh, when I come up inch and seven eighths, or not inch and seven eighths, seven eighths, whatever number I get over there is the same as I'll read on my readout behind the machine. And then the two numbers are the same. The numbers are stamped on this. Oh, that wasn't too confusing. Where was I before the phone call? I also want to talk about uh, the tooling that I use, why I use it, uh, and the difference between it 
and what you have with normal, what you would be more normal, boring bars the tool room machines would run into or the repair shop would have. I'll back this up a little bit. Um, I think most anybody viewing has looked at or seen the Criterion style heads. And that's generally what you'll find on a little turret miller like a bridge port or what have you. I actually like them for larger holes. You can see this one has a sleeve in it and a square tool bit. They work fairly well for that. Um, for one and two pieces they work fairly well. And the little one here uh, with a sleeve. You can set one of these uh, TSC tools in or a TSA and machine with it. What most people are used to seeing stuck in these things is Criterion style tools. These are Criterion bars. And uh, that, that's actually an ever ready bar. I better put that down. Criterion style bars have back rake or top rake, depending on who is your instructor, but they don't have any side rake. They have a moderate amount of clearance on the front end of the cut, cutting tool and they also have back relief along the axis of the tool so that the point just uh, cuts. They don't work quite as well as the dedicated boring tools that guys that do portable boring or build hard tooling, what I call it, my homemade tooling is hard tooling. They have a completely different tool geometry of things. And I'll bring this out and then zoom in so we can get a bit of a look at things at the tools I use in these boring bars. I'm going to zoom in a fair bit and get some more. That's all I can get out of the camera. This is a TSC tool, or what's left of it. The carbine on it used to be the same as the one that I've got on top of it, so I pretty much get all the squeal out of the pig. I grind them myself. We'll back up a little bit, but not get so far back that you can't see what I'm going to talk about. This tool, I'll lay the scale over top of it and I'll roll it back so that you can see it fairly well, has a lot of top rake or back rake. The tool is slanted back this way. Sitting as it is, it has a little bit of side rake, which is, this is the cutting edge. If I set the tool and point it towards the camera, this is the cutting edge, this is the back edge, it looks as if the back edge is taller than the front edge. There's a lot of things different about how these, these are ground. So, if this tool is placed in a bar like this at a 45 degree angle, it's to bore a square shoulder. In this aspect in the bar, square with the bar, hole through the center, it has very little clearance on the front, but it has a fair bit of side rake. The small clearance in the front kind of limits the feed rates you can use, but it really does a good job at knocking down chatter. When you put it in a bar like I have here, something very different happens. Now, I have almost no clearance on the front of this tool. And, if I set a scale on here, level, I'm going to say over two inches, my side rake is very hard to detect. It almost is a neutral rake. 